Hi, my name is Nana and welcome to my channel, A Puzzling Lamb. In today's video, I'll be reviewing two wooden puzzles by the Italian company Forma Cultura. Forma Cultura is a brand that specializes in making paper and wooden models of buildings that you can build yourself. But they also have a small selection of wooden puzzles. And the two I'll be reviewing in this video are these Vincent van Gogh paintings. But when I bought these two puzzles, I bought them as a set, which also included some uh, small paper models of some of Vincent van Gogh's paintings. So I will, of course, also be doing one of these. Now, if you want to see my very first impression of these puzzles, go watch my first video I ever made, my May puzzle haul. In that video, I show you me unboxing these puzzles for the very first time. Now, are you back? Have you watched that video? Then let's go back in time and watch me build these two puzzles and a paper model of one of Van Gogh's paintings. So first, let's take a look at the box. This isn't the most beautifully designed box I've ever seen, but I like that the image, there's nothing covering up the image, you can see all of it. And I like this design here, where you can see a little preview of how the pieces are. All the information on the box is in Italian, which makes sense. It's an Italian brand. I believe it says here that it's a wooden puzzle. You have the name of the puzzle, the size of the puzzle. Perhaps I should do this. You can see the size of the puzzle and the number of pieces. Now on this side, the same information. Here you have some company information, nothing on this side. And then here you have some symbols and I believe it says here something about quality laser cutting, specially shaped pieces. Uh, and I don't remember what it says here. And then made in Italy. And then on the back, same information. And then this lovely design of some of the other puzzle images they offer. Now the box itself, it's not the most sturdy box I've ever seen, but I wouldn't call it flimsy either. It's a perfectly nice quality. Inside, you have this little flyer with some more information, first in Italian and then in English here. If you want to read it, you can pause now. And then I like to see this, the pieces come in a fabric bag. And inside, which I find is a little bit weird, but inside the nice fabric bag is a plastic bag. Now I have opened this before, but this was closed. Let's take a closer look at the pieces. So the first thing I notice is a lot of whimsy pieces. A lot of them. Now the pieces themselves, very lightweight, the image Looks clear, nice colors. Let's just, just measure the thickness of the pieces. Mm, I'd say this is about three millimeters. Yes, three millimeters thickness. Mm, very standard for a wooden puzzle, I believe. Not the thickest pieces, not the thinnest. So when it comes to sorting with wooden puzzles, I usually just sort out the edge pieces 
and the whimsy pieces and just lay everything else out. In the video about the edge puzzle, I had a comment that it would have been nice if I timed myself doing that puzzle. And I completely agree. So I'm not in the habit of timing myself when I do puzzles. I very rarely try and puzzle as fast as I can. But from now on, I'll try to remember to time myself when I do puzzles for video. Uh, but again, I'm not trying to go as fast as I can. And especially with a wooden puzzle, I really just want to take my time and enjoy it. Wooden puzzles are not cheap and they are very it's a very special experience putting together wooden puzzles so it, it would be a shame to just fly through it but yes very excited about this some very fun piece shapes i'm also noticing that all the ins and outs they have perhaps see that like this see there's some fun shapes in the ins and outs some hearts and stars so very excited to try this. So this is my progress so far. I'm currently doing the edge and it's a bit more difficult than anticipated. I don't think all of these pieces are edge pieces and I think I might also be missing some. So I don't think I'll actually finish the edge before moving on to other parts of the puzzle. But for now I just wanted to show you some observations I've made. First off, there's not quite as many whimsy pieces as was my first impression, but it's still a really nice selection. I really like the detail that's in them. I think this one is my favorite. I really like this one. Um, this one, I have no idea what's supposed to be. If you have any idea what this is, please leave a comment down below. Now, something I forget, forgot to mention before is the surface of the pieces. They are completely matte. It's very nice surface and smooth. Now, I also noticed that the color on the pieces don't quite match what's on the box. I don't know if this comes across on camera, but it looks like the colors on the pieces are a bit more muted, a bit more pastel in color. So that's something worth mentioning. 
but I will say that other, other than that, the quality is very nice. I've noticed no burn marks. I've noticed no pieces where the image are chipped off. And I really like the shape of the pieces. I like how there are some pieces that are tiny and then some pieces are very big. So I really think this is going to be fun to put together. It is fun to put together so far at least. So now I think I'll abandon doing the edge. I think I'll probably try and put together the floor and then, I don't know, probably the bed. Just I'll just take it as it comes. Just see what st stands out to me. So yes, this is my progress so far. I don't think this is going to take very long. It's not a very difficult image, I think. But let's see, I've been wrong before. <laughs> Is the finished puzzle and I must say I really enjoyed putting it together but as always I'll share my final thoughts at the end of the video for now I will move on to the next puzzle and first again the box exactly the same as the other one one thing I do notice is that I can already tell that the cut of this puzzle will be different from this one because as you can see 
here 259 pieces and here 243 and I think that's a really good sign because it would be very easy for them with two puzzles this similar you know they say it's the same artist it would be really easy for them to just repeat the cut between the two but it's very positive that they haven't done that so let's open it up again the pieces in a fabric bag here a 10% coupon code and the same flyer again so let's open up the pieces again plastic bag inside the fabric bag So again, the quality of the pieces, exactly the same, nice matte finish, the colors, let's see, because I did notice, as I said before, that the colors on the last puzzle, uh, the colors on the pieces were a bit different than the colors on the box, but let's see if it looks like there's the same issue here. It's a bit difficult to tell. Perhaps, again, the colors and the pieces are a bit lighter, not as saturated, but it'll be easier to tell when I start putting it together. Now, as for my strategy, exactly the same as last time, just uh, turning all the pieces with the image side up, sorting the edge pieces and the whimsy pieces. Uh, and oh yeah, one thing I forgot to tell. As you saw, I did time myself and the other one took me about 1 hour and 11 minutes. I have no idea if that is particularly fast or slow, but as I said, I wasn't trying to be fast, I was just taking my time. But <laughs> I am expecting this one to take quite a bit longer. So, but we'll see. I'm sure it will be a fun experience no matter what. So this is my progress after 35 minutes and as expected 
The cut is completely different from the previous puzzle. For one thing, there are no whimsy pieces, but instead the piece shapes follow the image. And I'll try and show you what I mean, but as you can see here with, uh, with the tree, the piece shapes kind of swirl up along it. And here with the buildings, the pieces are much more square uh, and box-like in the shape. And perhaps uh, it's most obvious here around the moon, as you can see. So I think that's really fun. Now, as far as the colors go, uh, I think the colors match the box. Um, much more than the previous puzzle. I can't tell, I really can't tell there's a difference. Now, one thing though I will say is I have noticed a few burn marks. You can see here, but it's not a lot and I don't think it will be obvious when the puzzle is finished. Now, as you can see, I haven't completed the edge and I don't think I will. I don't know why, but I just think the edges in these puzzles are really difficult. I think what I'll try and put together next is this part, but I don't really know. When I look at all the pieces, they all look very similar. So I think this is just a puzzle where I'll be all over the place. So let's see how long it will take me to finish this puzzle. I just passed the time where I finished the other puzzle and there are still quite a lot of pieces left. So yes, definitely more difficult than the other one, but still not frustrating at all. I'm really enjoying it, except for that piece right here. I really want to be able to connect this, but I just can't seem to find that one piece.
So here are the finished puzzles. I really loved doing this one. I really loved the cut on this puzzle. And in a moment, I will flip both puzzles around so we can have a closer look at the cut. But first, I just want to uh, show you some qu small quality issues and or differences between the two puzzles. So the first one, as I mentioned before, uh, with this puzzle, the color on the puzzle compared to the image is more muted, less saturated. On this one, the color difference isn't quite as big. I can see on camera it does look quite noticeable. In reality, the color difference isn't quite this much, but I actually like the color on the puzzle more than on the box. It's more saturated. Um, yeah, and I just like this one more. Then another one that is quite obvious now that I've got the uh, puzzles on the same board. I didn't notice it before, but they are obviously not the same size, even though when you look at the box, they should both be around the 40 times 28 centimeters. You can see there and also says so on this one. And that's the size this one is. This one is quite a lot smaller uh, on this side. I wouldn't say this is a quality issue more than a mistake on the box. Then other than the color, I didn't really have any quality issues with this one. But unfortunately on this last one I did, there are quite a lot of burn marks and chipped pieces. I think you'll be able to see them here. And also quite a lot over here. You can see there, for example, and there's also some here. And luckily this image is very dark, so it's not quite as obvious, but especially in the lighter sections here, you do notice it. So that really is a shame. But for now, I will turn over the puzzles, flip them over. I moved them on to one of my fabric covered boards so they won't slide around. So wish me luck with flipping over these puzzles. One thing before I flip over the puzzles I forgot to mention is with both puzzles, the image on the box is cut off quite a bit from what it is actually on the puzzle. So as you can see here on the box, it's cut off all the way down here. And on the bottom, on the, bo on the box, the image is cut off here. And it's the same thing with this one. It's cut off here. And on the top, it's all the way down here. Now, this isn't something that's bothering me, but it is worth mentioning. So now I will flip over the puzzles. I managed to flip over the puzzles and wow, this looks really beautiful. I have never done this with a wooden puzzle before. And I especially like this one. And as I expected, you can see quite a lot of the image in the piece cut. You can see the moon is here and stars and the swirly sky. And you can even see the village down here. You could almost, as an extra challenge, put this puzzle together this way uh, around with the image side down. I think that would be, would be a really fun challenge. This one is more of a standard wooden puzzle with the whimsy pieces. I still have absolutely no idea what this is supposed to be. Please, if anyone knows, leave a comment. One thing I really like about both puzzles is even though there's a lot of swirly pieces, uh, like in a lot of other wooden puzzles, they still have the innies and outies, which means that it locks together really well. And not only are there innies and outies, but they're also really fun shapes in themselves, like hearts and stars, and a lot of fun shapes. And another cute little detail I had noticed before is in each puzzle, there's a piece 
with the brand name and logo on it. I think that's a really fun little extra detail. I must say, I really need to flip over my wooden puzzles from now on when I've finished them. It's really fun to look at. Now the last thing I want to do is put it together one of these paper models. And in this set there are four to choose from. And the one I want to put together is this one. I really love this painting, but also it just really reminds me of Doctor Who. If you know, you know. It's one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes. Ever. Even if you've never watched Doctor Who, go watch the Van Gogh episode. But <laughs> anyway, looking at this, there are not a ton of instructions. There's just this on the back. It says cut, fold and glue following the instructions. And it shows you the different elements to put together and what is a valley fold and a mountain fold. Now I've taken a picture of this because when as soon as I've cut all these pieces I won't really be able to see this anymore. So I've just taken a picture of it. Now for supplies I have a small scissor and I have a ruler and this little thingy to make all the folds and then when it comes to glue, I thought about it. And my first thought was just to use a regular, what's it called in English, glue stick. But I'm afraid it won't hold together. Um, the cardboard, it's very sturdy and as you can see, very smooth. And I feel just have to sit and awkwardly hold everything in place, waiting for the glue to stick. And I don't have the patience for that. So I found this glue I had bought for some other project. I haven't started yet. But it's a... Is it called a quick glue in English? In Danish it's called second glue. As in, it takes a second to glue. And uh, this one has a nail polish uh, type of brush application brush so I hope this will be easy to use I will of course make a little test using some of the extra cardboard I'll get uh, before putting gluing any of the the model together so yes but the first step is to cut
So here are all the pieces cut and folded. As you saw, I chose to use a small knife for some of the more tricky parts. Now it's time to test the glue. Now I have a few pieces of paper just to protect my board from the glue and some test pieces here. So let's see, I've never used this glue before. Okay, it really is like a nail polish brush. So small amount there. And then let's see. Should probably also test out a piece with the so it's this both the shiny sides together. Okay, it really does glue right away immediately. That feels good. Doesn't seem like it's coming off. I think it'll work with this glue. Now, I'm not going to film gluing this together, mostly because I need to be able to see what I'm doing and with the camera right in front of me and I'm afraid it'll just be a whole mess. So yeah, unfortunately I won't be filming too much of it, but I'll come back when all the individual pieces are glued together. I have now glued all of the individual pieces together and it's time to assemble the whole thing on this one. I will say if you're ever going to do one of these, it's a very good idea to take a picture of the card before you cut anything because I don't think it's impossible to figure out how all this goes together without the image but it'll definitely be a help and also take a picture of this side of the card so you can see uh, the number of what the number is of all the pieces so yes i definitely recommend that and i also must say i definitely recommend this glue it was so easy to use and it, it glued everything together in yes a second <laughs> um i if i remember I will put a link in the description of where I bought this, but it's from a Danish site. So for everyone else here, you can see what it, you can see the glue here. So I definitely recommend this, or at least uh, one similar to this with an application brush like that. I haven't seen it before and it, it's my new favorite glue. It was wonderful to use. So now let's see if I can figure out how to put all this together. I mean, wow, just look at this. Isn't it pretty? Such a brilliant idea to take a painting and make it into a 3D model. I really think the effect is stunning. Now, I didn't quite manage to line everything up perfectly. You can see right there and down here too. But overall, I think I did a pretty good job. I really have nothing bad to say about this and it's great quality also, really sturdy paper cardboard thing it's made of. I'm really looking forward to doing the other three I have of these. The first thing I want to mention about these puzzles is that I really enjoyed putting them together but i can't deny that there are some quality issues especially with the last one i did the starry night puzzle now there is the possibility that i just i was just unfortunate and got a dot that does happen even with the best of brands but it could also be an indication that the quality can be inconsistent with these puzzles there were also the fact that the colors on the image on the puzzle and the image in the box didn't quite match and that the box didn't show the entire image. But what I think that these puzzles really do well is the cut 
the cut on both the puzzles were really fun to put together, but most of all, the fact that they were so different from each other, I was really a fan of, and it does make me very curious to try some of the other puzzles so I can see what the cut is on those. But one thing we have to talk about is the price. Now, all the puzzles on their website are currently on sale. But I have to say that when I bought these puzzles back in May, they were also on sale for the same price as they are now. So I have a feeling that the sale price might actually just be the normal price. But one puzzle, the normal price is 60 euros, which I think is expensive even for a wooden puzzle. And I don't think the quality can match that price. The sale price is 48 euros, which is definitely better, but still on the expensive side. Now, the shipping and the shipping, at least to Denmark, is expensive. And I'm sure that's not a fault of the brand. That's just how it is, I guess. But the shipping to Denmark is 25 euros, which is a price that would normally be a deal breaker for me, that would stop me from buying anything from a brand. But when I bought these puzzles, as I mentioned before, I bought them as a set. And that set, the normal, again, normal price is 131 euros. Uh, and the sale price, which was what I gave, is 99 euros. And that did give me free shipping, which of course made a huge difference. But I don't know what amount you have to buy to get free shipping. And I don't know if it's different from country to country. So my advice to you is if you're interested in these puzzles, go to the website, which I will, of course, link down below in the description and put something in your card and see what the shipping is. Now, of course, I also have to talk a little bit about the paper model and that one I have nothing bad to say about. I was worried at first that the tiny amount of instructions there were would make it difficult to put together, but it really was enough instructions. I had no problem uh, figuring out how to put it, put it together. So to recap, I did love these puzzles despite the quality issues. And I think I could see myself buy from them again, if for nothing else than just to see what the cut is on their, on their other puzzles. But I don't think I'll be buying them at full price, which I think is the sale price. But if they have a real sale one day, I might be buying from them again. And if I do, I will definitely buy some of the other paper models because those were really fun to put together. Now, I quickly want to mention that for my next video, I also plan to do a review of a wooden puzzle. But this time it will be of this hand cut wooden puzzles from the Netherlands, from the brand Puzzle Roots. So stay tuned for this one. I'm really, really looking forward to doing this puzzle. I am a huge fan of wooden puzzles, but what I want to know from you in the comments down below is whether you are too. Have you ever tried a wooden puzzle? What is your favorite brand? And would the quality issues I experienced with these puzzles be a deal breaker for you? And of course, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. See you next time.